So um, I have to be very careful about how this video and how the stream was titled because had I put something a little bit more direct, <laughs> I would have definitely gotten flagged. YouTube would have killed the stream. Fucking Twitter would have taken everything down. Uh, the only place where this would have been allowed to be seen is Rockfin and Odyssey um, and, uh, and shit like that. So... <laughs> like, uh, so I, t I titled this very specifically so that I wouldn't get a flag and I wouldn't get the video deleted and I wouldn't get a strike against my channel. I just got a strike removed yesterday. I got a strike. One of the fucking bullshit strikes I got on my channel uh, finally got removed. It, 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 they take, they take, I think it's, it takes like two months for that strike to get removed, but I, but I did get it removed. So. I was like, I can't be direct with the title of this, so I have to figure out how to kind of dance around the topic. But I am going to, you know, be be pretty straight up in the video, uh, and I'm not, like, advocating for, for Nazism or anything. Uh, so, you know, like, I'll, I'll say that at the top of the video. I'll say that at the top of the segment so that if this video does get flagged, I can be like, yo... At the beginning of the segment, I basically tell you <laughs> that I'm not advocating for Nazism. I'm just pointing out how the Nazis stole uh, a very powerful old ancient Hindu symbol and used it for hatred. And that's exactly what they did. And that's what that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, I, I, I uh, happenstanced upon this article that talked about the four H's behind the swastik. Or the, or or the swastika, right? As 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 most Americans know the term as uh, uh, it's called the swastika. It's the it's the symbol that most people associate with uh, with the Nazis. That's that's what it is, right? And in America at this point, that's the only thing that they associate that symbol with is Nazis, right? It is the Third Reich. It is about uh, hatred. It is about Hitler. It is about the Holocaust, right? But they don't consider as as the author put it the fourth h which is heritage right so it's 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 a hindu symbol that you know is has has kind of transcended into various different philosophies right it's not just the hindus that use um use the swastik it's uh it's jains it's buddhists um, you know, it, it's a lot of those Eastern philosophies use the swastik and they, they kind of kept the meaning for the, for, for what it was. Um, and they kept the meaning going for a really long time until, uh, the Nazis used it as their fucking logo. <laughs> um, to the Pacific Southeast and the Indian subcontinent, this, this symbol, the swastik, uh, which is not tilted on its axis. It is, it's, you know, it's, it stays firm. It stays planted. It's upright. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't really know. It's, it, I don't really know how to, how to describe it, but it, the, the Nazi symbol is, is, is turned on its axis. The actual symbol is standstill. Um, and the reason for that is because it's grounded and it's powerful, right? Like that symbol represents prosperity. It, it represents good fortune, um, it represents uh, uh, the you know the, the constant movement of of of, of fortune and, and uh, prosperity and things of that sort. Like the, it's 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 structured because it's firm and planted on the ground. And this goes back and forth. I've I've heard multiple different iterations. The Hindu symbol has four dots within the swastik itself that. Some people have told me mean four different things. Other people are like, they're it's just cool design. <laughs> it's such an old symbol that like I don't know whether they mean something or not. Regardless, it, the the greater meaning of the swastik is not Hitler or the Holocaust or hatred or the Third Reich or any of those things. It is the Hindu symbol of prosperity. It is the Hindu symbol of good fortune. And, you know, um, I was particularly fond of this symbol. Like, at one point, I mean, when I was a kid and was, like, thinking about tattoos and stuff, like, at one point, I wanted to get that symbol tattooed 
because I thought, you know, hey, this is a cool symbol. It 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 stands for something great, um, you know, and that's that's kind of the way that I would like to live my life. I would like to spread prosperity, spread good fortune, and 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 that um, that's kind of cool. So I want I want that symbol on my body and you know later in life you learn what that symbol means and i'm like oh no <laughs> that would be a terrible tattoo i would be associated with so many terrible things uh, i'm also fond of the ohm you know i have little ohm earrings I, I you you probably can't really even see them but i i have them you know in my ear i don't like big gaudy earrings i i, I keep them pretty small i have it tattooed on my fucking shoulder like i these symbols like i have that tattooed on my shoulder on my shoulder for a reason like these symbols mean something right the ohm is the eternal sound it is everything that was is and ever will be that's that's what it represents it's 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 a very peaceful ideology that and so i i gravitated to the philosophy of that i like that philosophy which like if you know me or have spent more than five minutes around me like surprise i have a fucking ohm tattoo right like surprise the other tattoos i want to guess get all involve philosophical comedians saying very deep and meaningful things about humanity like <laughs> so what weird holy shit but I was really grabbing. So anyway, I'm deviating away from the swastik here. But but the swastik, the reason I like the swastik so much, too, is that it was often associated with my favorite Hindu god growing up, which was Ganesh, which is, you know, if you if you listen to the intro thing that I wrote a bit about the story of Ganesh, uh, tying it to a much larger, uh, larger theme. And in India, that's usually where you see it. Like you, you see the swastik um, usually around a Ganesh shrine and, and something of that sort. Right. So growing up, this symbol was around me like all the time, right? So like I, I I have to kind of imagine, I have to kind of think of an American, you know, that isn't particularly fully educated. And the only thing they know about the swastik is that it's the Third Reich. It's the, it's the logo for the Nazis, right? It's the Nazi logo. And that's all they know. And then they go to India and they go, oh, my God, this is... So they're just Nazis over here. Cancel India. Like, it's just. I, I I don't know why, but like, I pictured that in my head this afternoon. I thought that was so funny. Um, Just like the general ignorance of not knowing where that where that symbol came from. And here here's the cool part, too. So it's associated. So this is the, the, the swastika is a symbol for. Uh, prosperity for good fortune and it's associated usually with Ganesh now Ganesh is um, you know he's the god of of literacy and knowledge he's the god of he's the god of the people is is what he is right he 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 he, he promotes things um, that are beneficial for the people that's what he wants right he's the remover of obstacles so you can see why the symbol for prosperity and good fortune is connected to the god of literacy and knowledge and um and, and you know artistry and uh he's the lord of the people like of course the remover of obstacles hell yeah that's associated with prosperity like he's removing the obstacles so that you can be more prosperous that's um that's the that's that that totally makes sense to me. So I was always gravitated to this. <laughs> and when I came here and I learned about World War Two, I mean, I came here when I was eight. I didn't learn about World War Two in history class when I was eight. We were still in India. We were still co covering a lot of stuff about like the early years, you know, the, the Mughal rule and the kings and queens and all that kind of stuff. We had gotten to some stuff about like how the, the British came in and uh, essentially fucked over the entire country. But like we hadn't really covered a lot of what was going on in World War Two. And and I guarantee even if we did, we wouldn't talk about how the British basically used us as cannon fodder uh, in their war. Right. Like like there, there there's a lot of documentaries that are like, yeah, the British wouldn't have done as well if uh, if Indian people weren't fighting on their side. So you're fucking welcome, <laughs> I guess. So the major difference, as I pointed out, is in the design of this is the fact that um, the Nazis turned the symbol on its side. They, they tilted it on its side. So now it looks a little bit more menacing. 
and and a, and a little bit more um, evil. Uh, there, there you go. Right again. It, YouTube can't cancel me because I literally said the Nazi symbol is evil. Like if they, if they, if they try to like fucking put a strike on me, that'd be insane, you know. And and I would hope that the people watching this stream uh, would would uh, <laughs> would yell at Twitter loud enough to fucking get that strike taken down if a strike was to occur on this very controversial subject. <laughs> But they tilted it, um, and I, I have done. I mean, this was the, you know, I even even as a design student back in college, I was very fascinated by the use of propaganda because it to me it, it, it was it was the most powerful marketing campaign that I had ever seen. It, it was the most powerful use of design that I had ever seen. Right, like to to use visuals, to use iconography, to use typography uh, and illustration in a particular way to sway. And uh, the an entire nation, an entire group of people, um, is is kind of incredible. Like you know, and and for for me, I was like, okay, if this was used for evil, then it can be used for good. That's always kind of the way things play out, right? Like if you can use something for good, it can likely be used for evil. You know, that's that's kind of the power that a lot of these ideas have. Uh, and symbols are no different. So I was always fascinated with. Um, with that, like design and iconography, and, and especially from the World War II era, both like the United States and what the Germans were doing, and I and I read that uh, the uh, I think it was Goebbels, who was the who was kind of like the propaganda master behind the Nazis, and he basically said, "Yeah, we're gonna take their symbol, and we're gonna use it for our purposes, and we're gonna tilt it on its axis and make it more powerful than it was before." And so they stole the symbol, and they perverted it, and that perversion is what we know now. This symbol um, has existed for fucking millennia. Like, Hinduism is one of the oldest religions on the planet. Uh, uh, you know, maybe, maybe as, as if not older than, than Judaism. And you can see how good their propaganda is. That they all they did was tilt it on an axis, and thousands of years of association gone in a blink of an eye. Because the only thing most people associate the swastik with is Nazis. And there was a portion of this article that I was like, "Holy shit! This is this lady is like." fucking um she's like peering into my soul <laughs> as it were because she talks about how like she had a really hard time with it uh because when she was a kid she that that was one of the symbols that she grew up with just like myself and you know she couldn't wear it around she couldn't she couldn't you know show that she was trying to spread prosperity and good fortune and I, and i you know i have a similar story to that too I, like i was like holy shit this is this has happened to me before cuz when i was um maybe 8 or 9 right 4th uh, or 5th grade something like that I, I was very new to america uh i had like four friends at this time and my grandmother had had uh, bought me a ring um uh, and it was a gold ring. She's very excited about it. And, you know, she she like came over for, for over the summer. Um, this is my mom's mom. I'm a lot closer with my mom's mom. And this is if you've listened to Empathy on Sale, I talk about her on that album. Um, and, you know, so, so she bought me this ring. She was very excited about it. It was his gold ring. She like measured it and said, you know, done all this. Stuff. And it was, and it was the swastika on there. Like it was a very prominent swastika. It was a little bit larger than what I would have liked, I think. But, you know, my grandma got that for me. I'm not going to fucking to like, well, didn't it come in a little smaller size or something? Like what an asshole I would be, uh, if, <laughs> if I would have done that. Right. So I got this ring and I was super pumped. And so I decided that I'm going to wear it for the first day of school. That's what I was going to do. I was going to wear it for the first day of school. This, this is probably the fifth grade because I wouldn't have done this in the fourth grade. Um, and I go to I go to school 
wearing this fucking ring. And uh, I get pulled pulled to the side by my teacher, right? You know, she sees that I'm wearing this ring. And she goes, hey, um, do you know what that symbol means? And I was like, yeah. Yeah, and I, I mean, like, of course I know what that symbol means. I grew up with this symbol. And she was like, uh, okay, well, you can't wear that in class. And I was like, oh, that's kind of weird. And she was like, yeah, just, you know, take the ring off. Put it in your pocket, put it in your backpack, put it somewhere safe, you know, and uh, and don't bring that back to school. And I was like, that's kind of fucking weird. And she and then she also had to, like, call my mom. Right. And and they told my mom, hey, do you know that this your kid was wearing this symbol? And my mom was like, yeah. And she was like, do you let him like leave the house wearing that? And she goes, I don't I don't understand, like, why you guys are freaking out about it. And then she and then she like made the connection. She, you know, and my teacher kind of explained what was going on. And my mom explained to my teacher that like, hey, this is not this is not that it's it's a you know, it's not tilted on the axis. That's not what this means. Blah, 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 blah. But she was like, well, he can't wear it. I mean, like when when he gets to that lesson, I think he's going to understand. But you should talk to him about it. So my mom basically had to talk to me and sat me down was like, we're going to put this ring away <laughs> and you're not going to wear it. Like you can wear it at home if you want, but you can't wear it outside. And she was like, it's, it's here in this country. It means a bad thing. It means something, you know, something awful. And you'll figure that out when you get to it. And eventually I did. But in that moment when she was explaining it to me, I was just like, I don't, I don't get it, but everybody's kind of freaking out about this symbol. So, uh, all right. And it's still, like, it's somewhere with my mom. My mom has, like, a bunch of jewelry and stuff. Like, that's kind of her big thing. And, um, you know, like, that's that that would be, that would essentially be my sister and I's inheritance. Uh, is, is, like, all of the jewelry that my mother has amassed over the years, including that ring. That ring is part of it. Um you know, and I can't wear that ring around anywhere because if I do, it's a conversation. Um, and you know, the the woman talked about like getting married. The 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 author of the article that I read talked about getting married, and she, you know, was was doing a traditional Indian marriage, and there is a part of it. Uh, there's very different, you know, stages to an Indian wedding. It's very elaborate, very long. Uh, I did not want a traditional Indian wedding because I didn't want to get up at four o'clock in the goddamn morning. Uh, so I said nay to the <laughs> Indian wedding and we did my ex-wife and I did something weird, uh, which turned, I, it turned out cool. Like it was it was actually a really cool ceremony. Like it was really fun. Anyway, uh, not important. Um, but but the the, the author of the art uh, of the article talked about how she like, you know, had this big uh, mund up, essentially this, this sheet and it had a bunch of swastiks on it. And uh, by the way, the technically pronounced swastik um it's not the the swastika is a very like uh anglo anglo-saxon way of saying it the swastik or the swastika is is it's it's the the, the vowels are shorter uh but but the further west you go the more they want to elongate uh like my full name is ramakrishnan but it always gets turned into ramakrishnan <laughs> It's such a Yankee way of fucking saying my name. And it entertains me. And inside, I laugh every time that somebody tries to pronounce my full name and they go, Ramakrishnan. <laughs> it just cracks me up. I'm sorry. I don't mean to make fun of people the way people say words. But um, sometimes uh, uh, y'all in the States say things funny. And, you know, I, I got made fun of a lot for the way that I pronounce words when I first moved here. So I feel like this is only fair. I'm kind of balancing things out here. Uh, so the swastik. So she had the swastik on her thing. But she realized that, okay, our family is going to get mad if we, like, change this thing out. But what if we sat down? You know, her 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 bridesmaid was was a practicing Jewish woman. And uh, and one of her family members was coming to the wedding and that person was a Holocaust survivor. So they sat her down and said, hey, 
you know, this is what this thing is. This is what this symbol means. I understand that th it has a different context here, but, you know, this is really important to us. And so we're going to kind of keep it the way it is. Hope that's cool. Blah, 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 blah. And then they basically seated the, the you know, the, the Holocaust surviving family member far enough away that they wouldn't see the symbol and it wouldn't trigger them. So they went to so many lengths to to like take care and to make sure that they could keep up with tradition, keep their family happy, and also make sure that this guest and this important person in their lives is also respected, right? And it shows like, you know, what Indian people in America have to sacrifice about their own faith and about their own traditions and about their own religion, right? They have to they have to sacrifice this thing because they have to be sensitive to to the needs of others, which is a super Hindu thing to do. Like that's preached, which I mean, it's not exclusively Hindu. I, I, I won't say like it's exclusively Hindu. Um, the Christian philosophy preaches that. Uh, there's uh, Jewish philosophy that preaches it. Muslim philosophy preaches this sort of stuff too, right? It's about the it's about brotherhood. It's about community. It's about taking care of each other. Um, it's about making sure like you're aware of what's going on around you. You're aware of of things outside yourself, right? Like they all of these religions really talk about how you are a very small thing in the grand scheme of the universe, and we should acknowledge and appreciate that. And and know that, you know, we're part of this awesome cosmic machine. Like that's that's what we are, you know, and and there there there's some something beautiful ab about that. Uh, or, or at least I think it's beautiful. Right. Um, but that's what true Hindus are about. It's not the shit that you see going on in India with the BJP. They, they that's a Hindu supremacy and Hindu, if it, th which is an oxymoron in and of itself. Like you can't be a Hindu supremacist when uh, the supremacy is all about one group of people being better than uh, than the other, and Hinduism doesn't really see shit like that. We just don't, <laughs> you know. Like I'm not even a practicing Hindu when I fucking know that shit. Even true Christians, right? Like, if this happened to a true Christian, let's say the cross ended up being um, a symbol of hatred, uh, which, in some senses, it has, you know, KKK, burning the cross and all that, which is also so stupid. Like, why would you burn the symbol of your God? Like, do you, do you think that's going to help your... Like, what do you, like, do you think Jesus, that's what Jesus wants to see when he comes back, is just like, oh, you set the thing that killed me on fire. Fucking weird. Why would you do that? That doesn't make sense. Kind of feels like you want to set me on fire now. Maybe fucking don't. Also, stop wearing that around. I gave you guys the fish, the fish thing. What happened to the fish thing? I felt like the fish thing was very clear to be like, do that. Make that the symbol of, of the religion. But you guys were like, let's go with the thing that killed him. Why? Why would you think that's what I want to see when I, this is ridiculous. I don't even know why I came back. This is crazy. This is so crazy. Is that is that pastor wearing a, an emerald ring? Why is that? What the fuck is happening here? Right? Like that's anyway. Uh, but true, like if you found out, you know, that's a symbol of hate and, and some people are triggered by that. True Christians would probably go to the same lengths that this woman went to ensure that this person is taken care of, that, that everybody's sensitivities are being met. These folk like m fucking Marco Rubio and, and Rick Santorum and all these fucking assholes that claim that they're religious, that claim that they're more pious, they wouldn't fucking do that. You think Modi's going to fucking do that shit? Absolutely not, because they don't care. They don't really they, they, they use the the um, they use the religion as a vehicle to spread their propaganda, as a vehicle to spread their agendas, as a vehicle to control people. Uh, and I, that's what I'm really against, right? Like a, a lot of what religion has to offer is about taking care of each other, is about being good to each other, is about community, right? And in the oldie times, you know, some enlightened folks had to say sh shit like that, or, or at least that's my thought is they had to say shit like that because in the oldie times we were just like, is that a... Is that a, a a a piece of bread? It's my piece of bread. I'm so hungry, and then we would kill each other. But instead, it's like maybe we we split the bread and everybody gets a little piece, right? Like, and and that's and they and they were like, who who said that? And it's like, oh, the sky prince. The there there's a guy in the sky, and he he talked to me yesterday, and it's like, oh man, you know that big thing that comes up? That's the that's the sky throne. That's where they that's where the guy lives, you know. 
I de- I deviated way too much on that bit. I like I'm I'm having too much too fun just doing the bits. Um. Uh, anyway, so what's the solution here, right? Because I do I do kind of feel it's it's a little shitty that like Indian people have to do this. Indian people have to hide a a symbol that's been around longer than the Nazis have. You know, I kind of feel like that's a little fucked up. Um, because we hate that. Why do we give credence to that symbol? Right? Wouldn't wouldn't the wouldn't the thought be let's take that symbol back? You know what? We're gonna teach this, and that's that might be the solution, right? Education might be the solution to this. Let's teach this. Um, as, as you know, yeah, you see the symbol associated with the Nazis, but they stole that shit because that's how fucking awful these people are. They stole a symbol that existed for thousands of years, um, and associated with themselves. They're self-centered. They don't stand for, for, for the greater good. And what you should associate that symbol with is the Hindu idea of prosperity, the Hindu idea of good fortune and, uh, the Lord Ganesha who is the remover of obstacles. You also have to uh, pray to Ganesh first. That's, uh, that's part of the rule. Because, because if you teach it that way, right? If you teach like, okay, the Nazis stole this symbol and they, and they tilted it on axis, they changed the meaning of it, and because of their propaganda, because of how strong their campaign was, it, it, the the idea behind the symbol changed. They took thousands of years of history and erased it, but which is bullshit. Um, and then you teach kids how to recognize what propaganda is. But see, that's that's where I think the problem would be is because if you teach children how to recognize propaganda, the second they go home and they're and they're uh, you know squishy liberal parents are watching MSNBC, they'd be like, "Hey, look at that lady spreading some propaganda." Right. And the end and the and America can't have that. You can't have an educated populace that can recognize your own propaganda. Like <laughs> and if we teach them, if we teach American kids how to recognize propaganda uh, and, and teach them like actual history, we won't be the most propagandized country in the whole planet. Like even when we go to fucking movies, we would be like, bop, propaganda. <laughs> Cause it's in there, man. Like even in the Marvel movies, like, like I, I, I uh, Lee camp and I've talked about this several different times. Is like the black, like black Panther for, for example, is um, I've rewatched that movie a couple different times. It's not bad for an intro movie. Like it's pretty fun. I don't think it's my uh, favorite of all of the Marvel movies. I, like I said, I think it's pretty fun. Um, it's a good movie. They released it in February and it's still fucking crushed all the block, like all, all of the records. But it is a primarily black cast. And how could you not? Like, Wakanda is one of the most technological countries on the planet, and it is in Africa. Like, if you threw a bunch of white people, it, it like, what the fuck? And there's two white people presented as, as kind of main characters in this movie, which is Ulysses Claw, uh, who is a pro-apartheid, <laughs> racist, genocidal maniac. Um, who wants to steal Wakandan's uh, vibranium for himself because he believes that it's it's you know his manifest destiny, and a CIA agent played by Bill Bobaggins. Uh, and in that movie, they basically make the CIA guy like, look how helpful he is. Isn't that nice? Like, again, if you if you are taught how to see propaganda, you would be like, wait a minute, the fucking CIA are garbage. Why are they presented as the good guys in this? Right, immediately immediately <laughs> but if you want to if you want to um give hindu americans their freedoms back their religious freedom back then that's a good place to start start teaching kids that this symbol was co-opted that this was part of a propaganda program teach them how to recognize propaganda and you'd see less shit co-opted politicians wouldn't be able to get away with you know putting a fucking kente clot and saying wakanda forever and saying oh well we solved racism like fuck off so there you go that's that's the so i hope the next time you see that symbol and and somebody associated with nazism you go hey 
actually that's that's not what that symbol actually represents and you can kind of talk to them about why this is why it's important not to continuously keep associating that symbol it's i mean this this kind of shit has bugged me my whole fucking life my whole life it's bugged me and no and like nobody knows that's the other thing is just like hardly any americans really know and hardly any americans give a shit like i've talked to a couple people about this and they're like mm, who cares it th- we're going to associate it with you know we're going to associate it with what we want Let's look at some comments. Uh, CG says, "Grats on your recent strike removal. Thank you. I appreciate that." Aram says, "Freedom." <laughs> I know it's a, it's a lot. Yeah, there's a lot of freedom uh, going around. CG. I mean, Coca Cola and others used. Uh, the swastika it used to mean a good luck symbol. Yeah, pr- prosperity and good fortune. That's you know, uh, that's that's exactly what it was. But I bet I bet they would never use it again. Uh, you'd need a huge deprogramming campaign to 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 do that. Uh, seems like the right facing and left facing symbols mean different things. Per Google, uh, swastika sun is swastika night. Interesting, huh? That's interesting. I, I don't think I've ever heard that iteration of that before. And, and it, again. You you might be right because, like I said, this symbol is thousands of years old, thousands of years old, Miguel. So you know, I would not be surprised if if that is what that means. And again, I would not be surprised if they tilted it on its axis to essentially mean, oh, we're in between night and day. We're the twilight of mankind because we be the third Reich, motherfuckers. I don't know why I turned them into like a gangster rapper for some reason, but. But that's what happened in that moment. Arab says, cancel, cancel India. Uh, <laughs> wait till the next story, sir. <laughs> um, Holly's back. Welcome back, Holly. Uh, Holly says, surfer cross two co-opted. What is the surfer's cross? Holly, you are. I, I always like when you when you're in the stream, which you're, you're in the stream uh, all the time. But like you bring up these little things that are just fascinating where I'm like, I don't know about this. Uh, and I know everything. <laughs> no, I don't know anything. Um, but you do, you bring stuff up and I'm like, Oh, that's fucking cool. That's fucking fascinating. Well, so I don't know what the, what the surfers cross is. Uh, but, uh, please do, please do tell me, uh, uh, because I would, uh, I would, I would love that. CG likes my name. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, Fish is approximate to Christian. Yeah, I believe the fish was the sign of uh, Christianity, uh, the infinity fish that you kind of see on cars and shit like that. Like, I think that is that was the initial that was the initial sign Uh, or the PX was the other sign that they would use, which uh, I think Greek Orthodox, the Greek Orthodox cross still uses a portion of that of the PX symbol. That was also another symbol for uh, for Christ. Um, the fish thing had to do with uh, the fishes and loaves thing. Like the the cross, I think came around. Uh, if if I remember it correctly, Constantine. Is that right? Don't quote me on that. I might have that wrong. Well, now I'm getting hungry. Uh, sorry, sorry for making you guys hungry by talking about the fish thing for so long. <laughs> uh christians stole from the pagans too yeah there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff from uh from paganism that translated into into christianity that's i mean that's that's almost like roman influence too like the the romans stole a bunch of shit from the greeks especially their gods especially a lot of the religious um uh iconography they stole from from them uh cg says they don't teach that to children though how to how to recognize propaganda yeah uh and and said they rewrite history and feed prop feed you propaganda from birth yeah it it, the the history that you learn in school if you don't have a a teacher that takes it upon themselves to kind of teach you stuff um you know it it is kind of propaganda it's this watered down version of history 
that later when you look at it, you go, okay, there's versions. That, I mean, like what I was taught in school was a version of the truth, but there's a lot of details missing, right? Like World War One, I, I, the Spanish flu never mentioned. I never learned about this the Spanish flu being associated with World War One. I. I never learned about the Espionage Act connected to being uh, connected to World War One. But why would you, right? I mean, you know, I went to school in the late 90s and early 2000s. That was right around the time that the Patriot Act was being written and pushed by uh, pushed by the almighty Joe Biden. Uh, by almighty, I mean slowly uh, having a cognitive decline in front of our eyes. Uh, Joe Biden. So why would they teach you about a law that is basically like, you know, the the prequel to the to the fucking Patriot Act? They're not going to teach you that kind of stuff. Um, so, uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. looks like the Iron Cross. Oh, the Fisher of Men. Uh, the, oh, so that's the Surfer's Cross. Okay, uh, that is that is good to know. I think I know what that means. My art history teacher actually went through the uh, the history of how it changed, which was a really fucking cool lesson. Doctor Augustus Brown. Shout out to Doctor Augustus Brown, uh, one of my favorite fucking teachers from college. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Fred wants to know if I got the album on vinyl. I do not, sir. My my album is an hour and a half long and will not fit on a vinyl. <laughs> Although I have I have um kind of toyed around with the idea of uh taking a couple of my favorite tracks from various different albums and you know doing like a two disc forty five or something like that. That would be something I could afford. I think uh, vinyls are expensive. They're they're really expensive and they're difficult to get printed. And then the other part of it too, I live in a very hot house over the summer, so I got to be very careful about storing them and things of that sort. But uh, but perhaps one day I will put some tracks on a vinyl and uh, and and have that for for sale. You 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 might have you might have kicked a couple uh, co you might have kicked a couple cobwebs off some off some uh, gears in my head there, sir. Um, CG, this is the last comment I'll read, and then we got we'll move to the next segment. Uh, ba -ba -da -ba. So CG says school books from the same publisher are altered sometimes from state to state. Yes, I did a video on this uh, maybe three years ago now, four years ago, sometime in 2017, 2018. Uh, Texas, which you guys are talking about in the comments, um, yeah, Texas is notorious for doing this. The the California too. California does it on on the liberal side. Uh, Texas does it on the conservative side. They wanted to change, you know, the word slave to workers. Uh, and my friend Stuart Huff has a great joke about that, where he goes, "Why don't we just change the word history to bullshit?" Um, you know, so they they basically purchase these large amounts of books and and then they distribute them to different states. Um, that's, that's part of how they control and manipulate education. And that's, that's also how Texas controls and manipulates education for states like Alabama, Mississippi, Florida, Louisiana, Oklahoma, you know, states that don't have the budget to order, you know, 2.5 million books, 2.5 million textbooks. Texas does. And then they, you know, then, then they say, Hey, by the way, since we're giving you all this money, uh, we have some, edits we would like to make and the publishers oblige right because the because because fucking spe money is speech my money's fucking sp you know that stupid bullshit has now permeated into controlling our education and making our kids more propagandized and and less of critical thinkers you know and it and it really destroys education so uh okay Thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you hit the like button and please make sure you share this content out. Sharing is very important. Sharing is how independent media gets the word out there about topics that corporate media doesn't even want to mention on their networks. So it's really up to you guys. Corporate media very much depends on the people. We are people powered media. That's what we really are. Uh, another great way to help if you're on stable financial ground is to uh, make a financial contribution to this channel. And you can do so over at krishmohanhaha.com slash donate. You can become a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets, early access to videos, bonus stand-up comedy and storytelling content, uh, a way for you to communicate directly with me, ask me questions, and other uh, premium content that uh, will be released on a monthly basis. 
Um, or you can make a one-time donation as well on that same website. Um, I also have uh, various stand-up comedy albums. I have about six comedy albums out right now uh, that are available on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. And most of them, if you get them off of Bandcamp, are available for a dollar or a, a pay-what-you-want pricing. And I also want to mention that I do have an online merch store. Uh, you can go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com, click on the merch tab, and check out all of the designs that I've made myself. And the Julian Assange shirt, there is a Julian Assange shirt that's on the website. All the profit from the Julian Assange designs will be going to uh, pro-Assange activists, such as Action for Assange, uh, Kevin Gastola, Richard Methurst, folks uh, 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 that, that are covering and talking about Assange. So I'm going to be making donations to them. Um, uh, it'll be 100% of the profits I make off of that shirt. Uh, thank you again for tuning in. Thank you again to all the people that have made contributions to the show, that regularly check out my content, that have subscribed to my channels. I, I very, very much appreciate it, and uh, and you guys help keep this uh, keep keep this this train a moving. So I, I very much appreciate that. Until the next video, we'll see you on the road. See you guys.